And I come from a country where this main sport, and the main sport with the strongest support, is amateur in ethos. It's played by all ages and ability in every part of the country, male and female. The uniqueness of that amateur strength has driven my will to protect it all the more. I suppose I should say that I think that Dr. Hill and even uh, one of the members, I think it was the rowing club uh, president yesterday, alluded to the fact if there was more women in sports governance, there might be less problems in the governing of sport. But uh, I think that there is, there is an issue in relation to gender representation. As we focus on driving attention into the integrity in sports challenges, we have to start with the most ideal prospect. If we're beaten before we start, then surely we may as well roll over now and await the decimation that has been described in, all, in other continents, but specifically Asia. For me, the ideal is that sports performers attempt to do their best on every occasion, and betting would reflect that. Indeed, I would expand on the concept of perhaps looking at legislating to separate betting from gambling, and the concept of being only able to bet on sport. In other words, you bet the horse will win, the dog will win, the team will win. You gamble on something that's not about sport. You, there shouldn't be a situation, in my opinion, where I can gamble that someone will kick the ball out after 30 seconds. The question is, do we need to look at things like how, that is, um, how that's addressed in legislation? Um, I raise the concept as I see that once we start to dictate through gambling when every aspect of that success or failure will take place, we facilitate the orchestration of a game or race. It no longer is the pure event that it's meant to be. This has repercussions for grassroots involvement, both as participants and as spectators in that sport, which is obviously negative uh, economic implications. Chair. I'm sure that I am abusing the amount of time given to us at this point in time, and I still probably have only scratched the surface of, of the issue. What's clear to me is that society may value sport, but many integrity as, um, aspects are simply taken for granted until organised challenges to that integrity gain a strong foothold and undermine the sport itself. It's a very multifaceted and difficult problem, and we need to be aware and be motivated to fight out, to speak out and fight for sport at every level, whether that's in the fight against discrimination, violence, doping, or organised crime. Unless we build a momentum, the need to face, uh, to discuss financial solidarity between professional and grassroots sports will become almost irrelevant. I say this because when I was small, I was, um, I think it was about five and a half, and I went into my auntie's house one day, and everybody was being asked. Uh, the same question, and everybody was answering the same question, but I was only five and a half, and I didn't really understand the question, but as the phrase was, and the horses are now about to leave the parade ring, rang out, I realised that I was supposed to be putting my bet on the entry Grand National, and uh, I still wasn't really 100% sure what the right answer to the question, what am, which horse are you going to back was, but my aunt gave me a, pe a pin, and she said, stick the pin in one of the names, and um, that started my interest in horses because it wasn't just my first bet, but it was my first win. Red Rum, second one, the National in 74. And my uncle gave me 90p, and I was trying to explain to him that I hadn't given him the 10p stake that everybody else had given him, which is probably strange as a politician now, admitting to that sort of, you know, trying to give money back. But... Um, I just look, and from my experience, and I'm not saying that all horse racing is corrupt by any manner or means, but I have had an unusual experience as a young person uh, uh, watching sport. And I tend to say that while I'm not five and a half anymore, and I don't necessarily put a pin in the choice of horses or dogs, I am as influenced and possibly more influenced by standing at the bookmakers watching the prices than I am about form and topography of the course and whether horses like right hand rings or left courses and stuff like that. So from my own experience, I'm very interested in this topic about the general integrity within sport, protecting it, making sure that people want to go and see it, whatever that sport is, making sure that people want to participate in it, whatever it is, so that the five and a half year olds of the future will be looking at not just the changes in betting patterns, which are important, but also 
you know, what weight, the, basically the basic factors that are based around the sport. So Chair, I think that the fact that we're having a meeting today, the fact that there are so many influential people contained within the room that have access to column inches, can keep on helping to put together the argument why this particular issue and this particular challenge to the integrity within sport must maintain a high focus, a high priority with yourselves. And all I want to conclude on is the basis that um, you're playing your role. I would like to, to play my role. But if we leave this place singularly, I think we all should be also leaving it in a spirit with a noble ambition to do whatever we can to face down those who want to make their money from destroying our sport. So thank you very much for your attention, Grimmie Huggett. Thank you. Yeah.